Our lab is interested in understanding the relationship between immune system and central nervous system. Central nervous system once thought to be immune privileged, but studies have shown that now there is a bidirectional dynamic and intrinsic relationship between central nervous system and immune system. But we don't know at the molecular or at the cellular level how exactly immune system is regulating the brain function. So there are a lot of uh, aspects associated with the changes happening in the brain which are regulated by immune system. But we are interested in one co particular question, how exactly a component called complement immune system, how exactly it is involved in regulating the brain function. So complement is a part of the innate immune system and which is playing an important role in development as well as in the adult brain. Think about the complexity of the brain. We have so many cell types and each cell type has many sub-cell types. We have neurons, non-neuronal cells, for example, immune cells in the brain, which is so-called microglia, for example. And even these cell types are connecting between different brain regions, neural circuits, and all these factors are contributing to the symptoms or behavioral changes we're seeing in humans. So how do we address these problems? you know, from cellular level, molecular level, behavior level, even connectivity level. Despite some evidence of drugs showing promise in animal models, but failing in clinical trials, studies done so far in animal models, especially in mental health disorders, have given valuable information about the pathophysiology of the psychiatric disorders. In addition, they facilitate the novel therapeutic approach for these conditions. Coming back to our studies on the role of complement system in mental health disorders, we are currently focusing on you know, disorders like schizophrenia, autism spectrum disorder, and also major de depression. So what we have found under chronic stress conditions, as we all know that, stress is a major risk factor for many psychiatric disorders, including major depression. Our studies have previously shown that exposure to chronic stress conditions activate complement system, which leads to impairments in the synaptic function as well as induces some of the behavioral changes. So now the question is, if you know that complement is a problem and its dysfunction or activation is leading to problems related to psychiatric conditions, how we can use that as a therapeutic approach? So we have some preclinical studies which are currently going on to inhibit the activation of complement system and we are testing this processes in animal models. And once we come to know whether these avenues or these strategies are important and if they are working in animal models or preclinical models, we can use that as an information to carry forward in the clinical trials. In, in our lab, we create animal models to dissect the role of immune molecules which have impact in the brain functions. How do we do that? We create transgenic mouse models where a gene of interest or a molecule of interest is either deleted or overexpressed in specific cell types. It can be in neurons or in non-neuronal cell types like microglia or the immune cells. Even within the neurons, we can go much deeper looking into the subcell subtype of neurons or subset of neurons, for example, excitatory neurons versus inhibitory neurons. Why that is important? As I mentioned before, each neuronal cell type or each cell type have specific uh, gene expression profile. So understanding the portfolio of each uh, cell type is very important in understanding how exactly they are contributing to the functional changes.